Welcome to the Shape Up Summit. I'm your host, Ronnie Tsunami Gandiza, the CEO of the Plant Based Network. And here in partnership with Shape Up Us, we are spotlighting some great topics on how to help families, how to really help kids and parents and educators who are connecting with the kids to help kids get healthier in a whole way. Again, thinking of the whole child. Today, I'm with a very special guest, Obi Indefo. Obi is an actor, writer, director, and arts education advocate. Devoting his life to storytelling and the power of the arts, Obi has chosen to thread his Nigerian and Jewish American roots into a life-affirming kaleidoscope exploration of multiculturalism and human awareness. The goal? Unity. After a diverse upbringing in Los Angeles, California, Obi embarked upon his undergraduate degree in psychology and theater at Yale University, then remained in New Haven, Connecticut for his master's degree in acting at the Yale School of Drama. Obi began in in-depth work as an actor, crafting impactful roles on television, including three seasons on Dawson's Creek, three seasons on Stargate One, SG One. By the way, I'm a big Stargate fan, Obi. Oh, so excellent. You know. <laughs> uh, along with pivotal roles on Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, The West Wing, The Wayne Brothers, The Jamie Foxx Show, along with pilots for CBS, NBC, and ABC, and culturally relevant portrayals in film and theater. Obi is the founder of the arts education nonprofit and multicultural content collective, Arts Alliance for Humanity, bringing artists together from around the world to unite and uplift the planet. Obi is currently in pre-production as lead writer on two groundbreaking multicultural television series, including uh, Juice Bar, a magical comedic satire centered around spirituality and the global organic food and health movement, and Dream Big, a cinematic journey into the lives of ordinary people with extraordinary abilities. After teaching his regular yoga class and shopping for health food in Los Angeles, Obi was struck by a hit and run drunk driver, severing his right leg above the knee and resulting in the same amputation of his left leg 30 minutes later. At the a year hospital. and a half ago, yeah. Wow. Having miraculously survived the collision, then having rehabilitated through yoga and natural foods, Obi has only deepened his commitment to inclusion and unity by immediately returning to his television and film content creation and taking on new acting, writing, and directing roles in his new body. Welcome, Obi. Thank you, Ronnie. It's a pleasure to be here. I think you do an amazing work there at the Plant Based Network, and it's an honor to be in your presence. Well, it is my honor. Obi, we've met uh, a couple of months ago, and I have to tell you, uh, your story still continues to inspire me. And if you don't mind, uh, tell us, tell us more about this journey. Yeah, you know, so I, I was on this path of, um, you know, I think um, introspection, like a lot of us have been, you know, figuring out what's my life purpose and why am I here on this planet? Is there one reason? Are there many reasons? Why, why was I created? What am I here for? You know, and I was working as a yoga teacher and super passionate about um, healthy food and healthy living, working in the arts as an actor, writer, director, and a, a teacher. And, uh, you know, so, so um, we all have our struggles in life and I've definitely had, had my own, my own share. And, uh, but this particular night in August of uh, about a year, and, uh, let's see, 20 months ago, so a year and, and eight, eight months. Um, yeah, I was shopping at Air One Natural Foods Market in Los Angeles here on Beverly Boulevard after teaching a uh, yoga class downtown LA. I was loading my groceries literally into the back trunk of my car and uh, a drunk driver came from out of sight and struck me right into my car uh, and ended up removing my right leg above the right knee and the left leg as well, um, almost instantly. And I was there on the ground, you know, um, and it's one of those things you just never can even conceive of, you know, happening over time or in an instant. And it, it did. And it just all of a sudden was this reality 
And um, I was taken to the hospital about four minutes later and they had to amputate the left leg above the right knee. And, you know, Ronnie, it was um, one of those things that sometimes when you don't have much of a choice, as far as you could tell, you, 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 you have to dig to places that you didn't think were, you were capable of. And I had to lean on spirit. I had to lean on God or whoever, whoever, my, whoever created me. And uh, the kindness of, of strangers, of people, you know, that uh, the emergency technicians and the surgeon, Dr. Milton Little at Cedar sinai one of the best surgeons uh, around, I, I, I lucked out. And it, start me, it started me on a new path of even deeper introspection. And again, having to um, survive and to figure out why this happened. Uh, if there was no reason, then there was no reason. And it, it did happen. And how do I move forward? How do I move forward? Now, when we talk about moving forward, you actually moved forward relatively quick from what I understand uh, that you, I mean, literally a month right after you were already inspiring others. How, tell me more about that, because I know you've got I, I've had so many other people tell me that you've already inspired them just because you almost basically popped right back up. Yeah, well, I had to. Um... It, 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 it was not easy. I had to rely a lot on my human instincts. Um, one of the things I did, I think that was very smart, is that I made some choices starting in the hospital. One of them was to um, only have the healthiest food I could have. I use some of these principles of I, I eat plant-based, uh, I'm a raw vegan, and I decided, you know, I'm going to do this instead of uh, pain medication. I'm going to do this instead of pain medication. I'm going to do this uh, in what I believe in my heart and soul to the depth of my being, which is that the earth created everything that we need here um, to powerfully exist and to powerfully heal. So I just would eat my healthy salads and vegetables and fruits and fermented foods and plant-based nutrition. They were angels were kind of, you know, get helping me from the health food market, Erwan into the, into the hospital. That's all I ate and no, no blood thinner, no stool softener. Instead of antibiotics, I did probiotics, uh, double, tripled by probiotics content. So um, uh, I used the, the power of the earth. Uh, if anything, out of vulnerability and need, out of being needy, I used the earth to bring me back to life. You know, and and yeah, about 10 days later, I was back in the gym, just starting beginning early parts of working out 10 days later from when 10 days from the leaving the church? hospital. Oh, my gosh. When did you leave the hospital? Uh, I was in one hospital for 10 days, and another hospital for five days, so 15 days total. And um, yeah, it was just so much blood loss and so much, you know, I was just out of my mind. You know, it was so, it was, it was brutal. It was, it was, um, I never thought, thought of myself as a tough person. I still don't think of myself as a tough person. Um, I'm an extremely vulnerable person. I'm a very emotional person. And what I did was I just, you know, cried and cried and cried and cried and prayed and prayed and prayed and did more prayer and, and um, just step by step, Ronnie. I, I can't express how small the increments have to be sometimes in order to climb out of hell, you know, or in order, in order to, to come back, in order to resurrect yourself. It's like one fingernail at a time, sometimes. Sometimes we have these quantum leaps, we have these big jumps, but frequently the best growth comes from each breath, you know, each thought. And there were times in the hospital and times during COVID this last year when I, I thought, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I have no idea. I have no, I have the foggiest idea how I'm going to take the next breath, how I'm going to take the next step. Um, do I, do I deserve it? Am I, am I worth this? Um, why is this happening to me? And, and, and somehow I'm still in it. 
I'm still working through my process, but you know, this, these are, we're talking about levels of depression, levels of anxiety that I wouldn't wish on anybody. You know, it, it, it's, um, you know, how do you define hopelessness? You know, how, how do you define that? You know, but I, um, but I do know it's, it, it is true what they say, I believe that it, it is darkest, absolutely, uh, usually the darkest before the dawn, before it just starts to break. And that's the, de that's the equation for faith. Now you start to exercise more, get, get into shape. You have, of course, your background in yoga. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, you're still not just doing yoga. You're teaching yoga even now. I'm and it's teaching. only been a year, a little over a year and a half. Right. Yeah, I'm teaching some yoga in and out in in the wheelchair, out of the wheelchair. I'm in prosthetic legs now, uh, some of the time, a uh, good portion of the time. So it's uh, a lot of the body doesn't doesn't know what trauma is. It doesn't really know. Doesn't really care. You know, it it, it cares, but it it it, it um, put it this way: um, the body. A lot of it's mental, you know, a lot of it's psychological and spiritual. Uh, my, one of my sayings is, you know, heal, heal the body and the, and the soul will follow. And heal the, heal, heal the soul and the body will follow. So the body is this amazing opportunity and really likes uh, creativity and likes creation and likes to, um, likes to work, you know. So a lot of the difficulty came really in my mind. And you've done, I mean, even after the physical, obviously you need to build yourself up physically, but you've been doing more and more projects, right? Tell I've been trying. Yeah, I've been trying. We've been working on this television series, Juice Bar, and, you know, it's a comedy that's all about <laughs> nutrition and health and all the things I had to survive through and, and that we all had to through COVID, you know? And the show really goes into, even though it's a comedy and a satire, goes into some of the greatest pandemics of our time, namely uh, diabetes, cancer, um, uh, uh, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, obesity, all these things and that are all related and which COVID is related to, which is related to our water systems, our agriculture, the state of our agriculture, um, eating meat, all these things, karma, all these, all these things that we're sorting through. And that's what the show really deals with. So I really felt like working on the TV series has given me more of a purpose to coming back to life and to really, you know, serving my purpose in this realm. Because when we die, you know, I believe there's a new realm, you know, there's a new a new forefront, a new vanguard of experience. That is another pathway. You know, it's like apples and oranges. Death is, is another doorway. It's another pathway for, for rebirth in a new way. And that's, that's a perfectly valid uh, existence, literally. Um, but while we're here, you know, it's, there's that saying one world at a time, <laughs> you know, just, just let's, let's work on this world. Let's, let's work together and uh, spread love as the best we can. And, bit by bit together as, as a team, as a family, as a unit, we survive and we pull through. Growing up, what, how were you taught? I mean, I'm thinking, obviously, you trained and in yoga, very disciplined. Uh, you were always into health. You know, so in terms of healing the body, I understand, but this resilience, you right. know, often starts as a as a child and, and growing up. Can you tell us more about your life growing up and what you think might have led to being more resilient? Well, it's somewhat of an Eastern philosophy, but truly it's a, it's a global world philosophy is, uh, the, you know, the principle of yin and yang, yin and yang, that is a bit of a mystery, you know, and it exists in humans, in the human design, the human genome of this, um, strength and then surrender, you know, in, in that interpretation of, of that tradition. And this yin and yang, this sort of symbol, this spinning wheel, as it were, um, 
really threw me for a roller coaster ride. Um, and I'd say more so the last six months, the last year probably of COVID and this whole situation has been hard, much, much, much harder for me, I think, than the experience of the leg amputations, um, which surprised me. Hmm. And, you know, Ronnie, I felt that um, uh, it's always shifting. We don't always know when it's time to use our strength and find our strength and when it's time to surrender, you know? And how do we be strong and what do we surrender to are the fundamental questions, you know? And, um, but I realized, you know, what is the one of the first things a baby does that we are familiar with? And what I realized, the answer to that question was, it cries. Right, it cries as a need for help. It cries as an expression of um, help, of um, help me, and or just of some sort of um, need, or 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 sometimes it can be like a despair. So I find myself, Ronnie, crying more and more, uh, and I consider myself a crier. I'm a pretty emotional person. I'm an actor. I'm very water sign, very fluid and, and emotional, but. I started to cry so much that I started to worry about myself. You know, I started to worry like, when is this going to stop? I, I just was just like convulsing with tears and anguish and, and just, you know, sobbing and sobbing. And, but whenever I would cry, I, I realized I would feel lighter. I would feel freer, you know? And it, I, it occurred to me that this crying is really like, like a, a, a very, very special best friend, really like a best friend. And the more that I could fall into that tunnel and just let the tears come up, let the, 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 the um, emotion and, and the despair and the, and the, oh, the pangs of, um, of uh, sadness, you know, sadness and longing uh, and wishing and hoping, you know, come up, the more that it would create this space in my body, this space in my being that could then be filled up with the strength, that could then be filled up with this power, this infinite human power, you know? And so I became this open vessel. So I was like, you know, this is really what I need to do is I need to keep crying and just getting it up and out, opening it and just refill with what I know, which is, which is the, the plants, you know, this plant-based food, this, this nutrition and literally like supercharge myself with the, 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 the mega wattage of the sun and the earth, you know, so that I was this empty vessel, this, this conduit, this vehicle for good, for positivity and change and, and love, you know, so th that became my, my yin and yang. So the power only came when I just feel like it felt like I lost it all. So the crying, I feel like, yeah, mm -hmm. the crying and then letting it basically cleaning and then letting it go out. So it's the, cleaning, emptying, wringing out like a wet rag, kind of like squeezing it out. And that's how it would frequently come with me is you know, music, sometimes dancing, music, art were the conduits into those tears. Because sometimes they were tears of joy. Sometimes they were tears of anguish. But then I got the sighs inside me, you know? And I, then I realized, Obi, it does not matter. It does not matter how lonely you feel. It does not matter how isolated and strange and weird and painful this is. You do not know pain you know, until you've been taken to that point where you think you can't take anymore and then it happens again and your world crumbles again and you believe your world crumbles again and again and again. And, and it happens so many times that you go, wait a minute here. How am I supposed to, God, how am I supposed to have any kind of faith? How am I supposed to have any type of belief in you? In, in the power of the earth, in myself? How can I trust my instincts, my human instincts, if I keep getting um, destroyed? You know, and then I gradually have been realizing that the destruction is the beginning of the rebirth. It is one of the only ways for true rebirth. 
Now, growing up, what was your goal? What was your dream as a kid? What did you want to be as a kid? That's a good question, Ronnie. I think one of my dreams was really just to move people emotionally. I really wanted to inspire people, to move people, just to be a presence in their life. To you know, I was very, very inspired by Mr. Rogers, by Fred Rogers, you know, and the the television series Sesame Street too. And I thought he was such a happy, friendly man that was a combination of yin and yang, so powerful, but so much love and kindness in his heart. And living so selflessly, you know, apparently selflessly for educating children and families and this concept of the whole child, that there, there is a whole child. There's, a, there's all the emotions, there's the physicality, there's the, um, the child that wants to be loved and held and, and cradled and appreciated and seen and heard um, and respected. And... Um, because we're all unique and we're all babies. We're all, we're all children of. And were you, were you actually thinking of that as a kid? Like I want to be Mr. Rogers or I want to be like Mr. Rogers or. I don't know. know if it, I was, it, yeah. I don't know if I was thinking it, but I know I was feeling it. You know, I don't think I was thinking it. I, I, I just believe I was feeling it that I saw the power of kindness and I didn't understand negativity. Negativity was just oh so confusing to me, Ronnie. I just, I didn't, I, 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 there was this word I kept repeating when I was starting around one years old or two years old. And this was the word I kept saying, what? What? Wait, wait, <laughs> what? It was this word my mom said, and it almost became habitual where like somebody would say something or I would see something or see someone's behavior or their, or their tone or, or witness something. And I would like, I couldn't process it because it was negative or it was, it was strangely, um, didn't feel right to my heart. Didn't feel right to my soul, you know, to, to, to my spirit. And so I think I gradually bent my psyche around adapting and pleasing situations and people so that, I almost became an actor. I almost became like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. That's fine. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, no, I'm okay. I'll, I'll just be over here. I'm fine. You know, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You're angry. And oh, okay, okay. That's okay. You can, that's fine. I, I understand why you're angry. And, and that's, that makes perfect sense, you know. But inside, I was like confused and torn up. I was like, like what? That doesn't make sense. That's not right. That's not right. That's not logical, you know. And, it doesn't feel right to me. And so it's been a process of unthawing and, and, and of, thaw, of thawing out and melting and unwinding these, these, these knots in my psyche so that I can have this internal agreement in, in my body, you know, in, in my chakras and my alignment. So that it goes that I can say, wait a minute, this is my truth. This is my truth. I think a lot of depression and anxiety is and and dis disease disease comes from internal discord and internal disagreement when you you don't feel that you can see, recognize, honor, and speak your truth. See, recognize, honor, and speak your truth. Because when you can do that, when you can speak your truth, you're clean you're free you're alive wow so growing up then you became an actor and i you know of course i was already thrilled because a lot of the shows you were in i'm a fan of but i'm a trekkie to begin with so i i can Perfect. yeah understand that so now obviously when you're going through and i know a number of other actors who've had to deal with the ups and downs who've had to deal with the disappointments kind of it's pretty much goes with the biz right there's a lot of people sure out there um how did that impact you in terms of resilience and you know, being able to not let one situation or one turn down you know uh impact you know or um push you away you from me, pursuing yeah. your dreams right yeah ronnie that's a great question it's a phenomenal question you know i think i feel that um 
honestly, the, the, the biggest hmm, moments of freedom and liberation for me have been derived from recognizing, this is gonna sound so bizarre, um, that for all intents and purposes, I don't exist. I, I'm not here, I don't exist. I only exist to the extent that I can serve you and help you. In essence, I am here for you. And when I started to grab hold of that or to experience that in my body, that was a whole lot of awakening and opening and, and joy and love in my heart because I realized, you know, this is about a theory of, this is the theory of Einstein's relativity. You know, this is like um, what was postulated there is that, you know, nothing is really, no person is an island. We're nothing in and of ourselves. So the moment I release myself into what can I do to better someone's life? What can I do to give them a hug, to cheer them up, to feed them, to inspire them, to to just let them shine and just appreciate them. And even if it's the tiniest thing, just a simple wave, a simple prayer to somebody, um, that's when I come alive. That's when I become real. To be of service to others. Exactly. And I, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I've heard a number of people that I've been essentially following talk about your e letting go of your ego uh, and connecting to each other and that can be a, a you know the the when we talk about people supporting us how are they supporting us you know some people say they're supporting us with words maybe actions but there are people that believe that that support comes in literally an energetic flow right that the the words have energy the actions have energy but then the intent behind it has energy and that energy is the support itself uh, right. that we're getting um, and that connection uh, and to be of service, again, of, of service is an intent. So if that intent is there, then that in itself ends up strengthening both people, not that just the person that's being helped with that intent, but the person that's giving the intent. And it seems like what you've been doing really in giving yourself and helping others and inspiring and even your project right juice uh, bar and others behind it that in itself is the that intent of building of, of that of being of service to others right because uh, you and i have had discussions about what you want to do at juice bar and what yeah. you want to do in general that in itself ends up building up your resilience, which is kind of, you know, people think of, well, no, I'm, if I'm getting help, people are helping me to be more resilient, yeah. but the act of giving, or in my case, I'm a big educator, right? You know, you know, Bar, me, yeah. I like to build training programs and the teaching is I'm not, I'm getting as much out of the teaching back to me as of me, you know, as I am getting from just giving, you know, as 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 I am, as the student is getting from That's me, the, yeah. I'm getting more back from teaching than they are to me <laughs> of of the knowledge I'm transferring to them. Yeah, so it's it sounds like it's true. You're totally right. You know, energy is very powerful. Energy is very powerful, and it, it, it's it's such a mystery. Sometimes God works in mysterious ways and beautiful, beautiful ways. It's a it's a masterwork. You know, this world, this universe, our, our energy systems are masterwork. You know, it, it's, it's such a mystery to me. It's like, it's circular, you know, and through birth and death and, and this re recycling, everything is, it's so hard for us to believe sometimes that the, everything exists like a giving tree, that it is unending. It is infinite. It is omnipotent. It is omniscient. And, and it, it, that's actually the way things function. You know, that, that it, it, you get more and the more you give, give, the more you release, the more that you receive. And it just it circles and it's like a spiral staircase up and up and up and up. It just keeps feeding, you know, and like you're an educator, that's when you created this wonderful platform, which is a big spiral staircase, you know, plant-based network, you know, 
this is us, this is evolution. This is, this is human evolution. This is planetary evolution, you know, and the forces of good that are operating, even when we don't see them, you do not have to believe in spirit or creator or God or whoever she is. You do not, God does not need you to believe in her. <laughs> God, this, this, we're not that powerful, see? See, God does not, she does not need us to believe in her to work the magic. The Buddha station is always broadcasting. It's like the sun is always broadcasting, even, even more powerful, believe it or not, than the sun, always broadcasting. We can align with the divine if we so choose to do so and ride those waves, you know, and, and I, I, I finally am realizing, Ronnie, that, you know, I, used, I love amusement parks. I love Disneyland and Magic Mountain, Universal Studios and Knott's Berry Farms and water parks and all these things. And I love this concept of play. That's what Juice Bar is. It's a big arena for play. And you go on this ride, you go on that ride, and you get scared, and you know you go on a roller coaster, and you you go up and you go down, you go in tunnels and and wind and smoke, and there's characters and you know and and plants and vegetables and fruit and 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 animals that you know that that are that pop out at you, and I you know I realize what do I want to be, you know how do I want to die, how do I want to live, what what am I, and the ultimate for me is not just being this kid who gets to go on any ride they want over and over again and again, again, again. I realize what I want to be and what I am making myself into is I am the effing roller coaster. <laughs> I am the roller coaster. I am these giant, I mean, that's, that's where the power for me comes in. I am these giant steel girders and support beams and tracks and wheels and all the grease and all the, and all the G-force, I am this ride and I am inviting everyone to come in and just, and just ride me, my, my experience. Live, live with me, live through me. And I will be this host, I, you know, use my, my body like this wonderful um, amusement park ride. And I will live through you. It's interesting that you say this because in terms of using the, the uh, whole amusement park uh, as your analogy, because yeah. you're, if there's anything I've learned in talking to you, you have a playfulness yeah. as a child. And, you know, and if a child, you take something away from a child, a child will find another way to do it. Right. Yeah. you be like, yeah, uh, you, you know, you can't Kids use this chair, yeah. right? They're just like, Oh, well, I'll just do this. Like they, there's no limitation. A child doesn't know limits. Animals, right? too. Animals too. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you have that same, when we talk about human resilience and this journey of, of both strength and surrender, the surrender is like, oh, well, that's, that's the way it happened. And the strength is, but finding another way, right. And, and not letting that get you down. And you have, it's, it's strange that we think, because uh, often people will think, well, you're weak like a child. But in this case, it's like, well, no, I'm strong like a child. I'm resilient oh, yeah. like a child. I think as an adult, we kind of are, we we end up getting uh, this perception of where our limits are. And that's it. And then when those limits, when we reach those limits or we reach those barriers, oh, well, that's the mature mind. It's like, well, there there's my limits. I know what I can and cannot do. Exactly. But a child knows no limits. Child knows no limits. Child is fearless. And fearless. Frequently we are fearless in our dreams, you know. And and why, you know, I I, I you know, because I'm gonna say something, you know, I think there are no limits to how humble we can get. There's no limits to gratitude. Gratitude is an endless well. Those layers go so deep. And when you think you've reached the end, you know, my advice is look again because. Are we willing fundamentally to step into the space where we ask the, 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 the magnitude, where we look into the, the magnitude of what's going on here and say, I say to myself sometimes, or a voice says to me, Obi, you have no idea really. You have no concept of how 
powerful love is. So why are you doubting me again? Why are you doubting the magic that I can achieve, a magic that I can create? Why? What is the purpose of, of doubting me? Do you doubt the power that I have to create wonder and happiness and joy through you? That's interesting. It's an interesting question. Why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? You know, because you don't have the proof. You don't have the verification. You don't feel worthy of it. What, what, is, the, what is the reason? It's something to really examine in the self is when you're standing at the foot of a, of a let's use a tsunami as a as an analogy here an avalanche a tsunami and you see the incredible size the magnitude and your breath is taken away <gasps> or you see a beautiful woman you know a beautiful man or you see a, a work of art and you say how is this possible how was a hummingbird created this creature of beauty how is that even feasible what what is that who has the power to do that to create worlds in the cosmos and black holes and matter and antimatter and stars and probiotics bacteria and uncles and aunts and 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 nephews and nieces and and you know who can create rocks and dirt and worms where who did this who, right. what, who, what is responsible for this? And, and you just, you throw your hands up and then that's when the playfulness returns and the wonder and the awe and you go, oh my God, what do you say? You know, what, 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 do, you, what do you say? And, and I, I, I asked myself a very intelligent question for some reason a few years ago. And I realized somebody said, maybe you're asking yourself the wrong questions. Because some of the questions I was asking myself was like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my loved one? Why, you know, um, um, why did this happen in this way? Why is this, you know, um, why is this not as good as that? And I started to realize maybe the question I can start answering myself, asking myself is, what am I going to say when I get everything I've always wanted? Just that. What am I going to say in appreciation for when I get everything I want? What am I going to say? Huh. You know, it, it, what a fascinating question. If your mind is completely devoted to that, just what are you going to say? If you've got a few words and, and, and everything is delivered to you that you've ever, ever wanted, all your hopes and dreams and desires, you know, uh, 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 hallelujah. Oh my God, amen, you know, uh, 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 thank you, thank you, you know, and thank you came to me a lot, you know, let me put my mind on what can I say in appreciation when everything does go my way. Gratitude, that's another gratitude. strength then, right? Gratitude, wonderment, you know, these are all great, fascinating ideas and you're just going to have to write another book, Kobe. You're just going to have to <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it, Drake. Good you want to write one together? We'll do it together. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, how can people learn more about you and, and your efforts? Because you, I know you're doing quite a few things, but uh, what's the yeah. best place for them to find out more? Um, there's a couple places. One is they can go on my, my Instagram. It has some of the, the amazing links to uh, my story and images and, and videos and, and way to contact me. And it's basically my Instagram handle is my last name. N D E F O, and then my first name O B I. So N is in Nancy, D David, E Edward, F Frank, O Oscar, and then O B I uh, at Indefo O B. And there's there, and there's also a link there to, I believe, to, um, or it will be there to my GoFundMe. I have a GoFundMe to support the prosthetic legs equipment and the, you know, adaptive uh, uh, physical, physicality equipment. And, um, you know, um, those those are the two places. There's a lot of articles, you know, on on Yahoo and 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 Google and all these places. But yeah, uh, we'll have we'll have links to those. Yeah. We'll make sure they're, those are yeah. are here. Definitely uh, reach out to me. Yeah. Yeah, Obi. Thank you so much for your time, effort, hope, and inspiration and motivation uh, for people. And uh, 
I know be I know we'll be working together on projects because it's happening. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's it's happening and in, in, in Juice Bar and we're we're uh, doing everything we can to uh, maneuver our way through and 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 get things. Uh, it's gonna done. happen. So yeah. it's, it's gonna, gonna happen, happen. In, a, in a bigger way than we're even imagining. <laughs> I'm, and I'm just thinking of what I'm going to say when we reach it now. Yeah, That's, there we go. All right, there we go. Thank you, Obi. You take care. I love care. you, Ronnie. I All love right. you so much. Okay. <laughs> I love you too. You say yeah. Bye. Bye.